Hello, it's Brett Taylor here from Tour Tactics, and my guest today is Riley Wielden. Riley is the 2013 PGA Tour Canada Sincrude Boreal Open champion, which was played in Fort McMurray, Alberta. Riley is the first Canadian to win on this year's schedule and is the current Order of Merit leader in the Drive for Five web.com tour cards. Thanks for joining me, Riley. Oh, no problem. Glad to be here. Uh, it's been a pretty solid year so far. Um, anything specific that you've been working on on the mental side of the game? Um, I've, I would just say that I've finally addressed the mental game in general. Uh, for the first couple of years of being a pro, I, I thought I could get by on, on raw talent and you know the tangible hitting the golf ball stuff. And I think this year my dedication to actually addressing some of the issues of the mental game and and tackling that aspect of the game has, has led me to, to new heights in my golf career, and it's starting to show in, in some of the results I've been able to accomplish. For sure. Um, and I know, you know, team is kind of an important part for you. I know you've you know, put together a few guys that have, you know, kind of helped you out, and Johnny Motomochi is helping you on the mental side, and I know you have swing coach as well as some other uh, people in your, uh, in your corner, so to speak. What uh, what have they done for you and mentally, and and how important is Johnny to your success? Well, I think any time you can have a group of people who support you and make things easier on you, that takes a huge load off your shoulders and allows you to be more mentally free on the golf course. And obviously, the less stress you have wearing you down while you're on the golf course, the better, because golf is a stressful game as it is. And just by building a good group of people around me who all want to see me succeed, who are all, you know, great people and, and truly want to help me, that's been able to just kind of lessen the burden of, of everyday tour life on me, which in itself has been a huge help. And then with Johnny in particular, we were able to kind of pinpoint actual aspects of the mental game and, and talk about certain things, whether it's, you know, breathing or visualization or game plan and and really get a grasp of, of what allows me to play my best golf. So I would say that just by building this team around me and, and addressing some of the areas that have held me back in years past, I've really been able to take a, a good step forward this year. And um, I owe a lot of that to that team, to Johnny, and to my dedication to looking after the mental aspect of the game this year. Well, that's, um, that's obviously been a key point for you. And it seems to be consistent for all the uh, the champions that I've interviewed. So, you know, you've mentioned a couple of things there, you know, visualization, pre-shot routine, game plan. What, what uh, you know, l let's talk about game plan. Is there, what kind of routine do you have when it comes to a game plan? Do you plan the night before or how much do you think about the golf course you're playing and what types of things do you kind of look at and, and think about? Uh, obviously, the game plan, game plan changes from week to week, depending on the golf course. Um, I, get, I try to get at least two practice rounds in, get a good feel for the golf course, get a feel for which clubs I want to have in the bag, where I want to attack the golf course from. Uh, for example, in Fort McMurray, it's a narrow course, but not a long course. And I, I knew right after the first practice round, as well as playing it in years past, that it was a golf course I needed to attack on my approach shots and not off the tee. So I set a game plan at the start of the week to hit a lot of two irons off the tee, be really patient with, you know, just getting the ball in the fairway, not trying to get too aggressive, and then really attacking the golf course with my eight iron and down from the fairway. And um, I was able to be successful by sticking to that game plan, and ultimately at the end of the week I walked away with, with a win and, and the satisfaction of knowing that I stuck to a game plan and that it was obviously the right game plan. So uh, do you ever find that you're you're standing on the tee and the game plan was to hit a particular shot and you kind of change your mind? And what's that situation look like? I, I honestly have that situation quite a bit. And it's something I've touched on with Johnny as well. Is Sometimes when you're on the tee, you have you know gut feelings or shots that instantly come to your mind that you're going to be more comfortable with. And I think it's important that even while you set a game plan that you you have a, a good sense of the way you are on the golf course and how you feel. And if you're comfortable with the shot and know that you're going to make a, a more confident and aggressive swing hitting that golf shot, you got to pull the trigger and have no, no doubts that you're hitting the right golf shot. And for me, that happens a lot. Sometimes I'll 
you know, I'll get into a groove or a couple holes earlier in the round, I'll hit really nice drives that translate to a hole later in the round and I'll step up and I'll see a shot and I'll think, wow, like I really feel that shot right now, even though my game plan says two iron or even vice versa, I'll step up with a tee and that I plan to hit driver and maybe I don't quite feel it that day and I'll put a, pull out a two iron. You got to, I feel like you got to know when to, when to pull the trigger and play aggressive and when not to, and when you're feeling a shot, feeling confident in the shot and, and when you might not be that confident and maybe should, should go a different route. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's, I think that's really important to have you know, following your gut feeling and your intuition, if you show up to a tee and, you know, it, you just feel like hitting a certain shot and it's not in your, it's not what you planned on doing, but, um, it's important to be able to change gears and, and to do that. And, I think your intuition is is probably the best instinct um, as to what shot you really should be playing. That's um, so that's that's great. Um, yeah, I think I'm, basically whatever shot you choose to hit in the long run, you need to find a way to be 100 percent committed to that golf shot and make a good golf swing with the decision you make. Right, right, and you you had mentioned as well, kind of uh, when you stand up to the tee, sometimes you really see the shot and you feel the shot that you want to. Uh, to play can you kind of elaborate on how how important visualization is to you then if that's if if that's something that plays a part in this yeah i mean i guess visualization comes to people in different levels for me i've always been fairly visual and fairly creative and had a good imagination so i'm able to when i'm confident with a certain shot i'm able to really get a a good foresight of the shot of the shot see the flight and uh, see where it ends up and that's where all the practice comes in, in handy because if you're on the range and you've hit a certain shot amount of times if you can you know see the shot on the golf course and then able to recreate that shot over the ball in a golf course setting that's what I think the ultimate goal for every golfer is because then you can stand up over the ball with a clear vision of your shot confidence knowing that you've hit the shot before and you can really pull the trigger with with 100 percent conviction yeah, and uh, you mentioned a couple of good things there, but um, you know, with visualization, I think there's two ways that to kind of look at it, and you make a good point with sometimes that vision just kind of comes to you, and then there's other times when maybe you're trying to visualize a shot that doesn't necessarily come to you, but you're trying to imagine what it is that you would like. Is that is does it work both ways for you? Yeah, and I think that's where sometimes discussion with the caddy can really help because you can. You can talk about the shot that you need to hit. You could say, hey, like, we want to hit it off this target in the distance with, with a nice cut, you know, low flight or whatever. And just the dialogue between you and your caddy, if you have good chemistry, you can sort of create that image in your head if it, if it isn't already there. And if you're struggling to, to create that image, that's when, you know, like I touched on earlier, maybe you should try and find a different shot that, that might come to your mind easier, whether or not it might be, the uh, the right shot per se. I think if you're able to visualize that shot and, and see yourself pulling that shot off, then that then becomes the correct shot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you, you had mentioned being committed to the shot and having the confidence in the shot. Is there anything that that you try to do or any um, process that you follow to try and you know increase your confidence or commitment or any kind of phrases you use that you say to yourself? Um, I don't really have any keywords or phrases I usually am pretty good at hitting the golf shot when I'm ready to hit it whether that's you know halfway through my routine or or waiting my routine out a little bit sometimes I can just feel when I'm ready to hit the golf shot and that's when I will step into the shot and and hit it with confidence but I think at the end of the day you need to in order to be successful you need to develop a kind of fearlessness on the golf course and and know that when you step over the shot, you know, you can pull the trigger and, and let it go. And it's kind of out of your hands at that point. And that you have no choice but to, to step up there and make a confident swing. Because usually when you look back at it, all the mistakes are not made from from an aggressive decision, an aggressive swing. It's usually feeling unconfident over the ball or trying to steer it or something like that. That usually results in, in a big number or a bad shot. Yeah, yeah, and and fearlessness is something, you know, it's a, a term that I've heard a few times in these interviews and, you know, really important to uh, kind of let go of 
um, any outcome thoughts and, and just kind of let go of it. So, um, and you would mention as well in your pre-shot routine, sometimes you kind of wait until you're ready is, do you kind of have a, a pre-shot routine that is consistent or is it kind of just when you're ready, you go? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I have a, you know, a, a pre-shot routine that's like clockwork. That's the same every time. Right. I definitely have times where I generally do the same motions, the same thought process, but sometimes it could be, you know, 10 seconds. Sometimes it could be 30 seconds. I just, I know that at some point going through my normal, you know, body functions or, or waggles or pre-shot swings that I'm going to feel the shot at a, at a certain time. And when I do feel the shot, then that's when I'm going to step in and, and hit the ball. And I've always been a relatively quick player too. So I, I tend to try to avoid taking more time than that's natural to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, just to change gears a little bit into some of the off course stuff, you know, um, you know, with goals, are you not to get into your goals specifically, but do you, um, do you set goals? Do you have a lot of goals? Um, short term, long term? What do you, what do you, what's your take on goals? I think goals this year have been probably the single most important thing to my success. This has been the first year that I've set goals in writing that have been clear and concise and attainable. And uh, I've made an effort to look at them, you know, nearly every day, keep a good vision in my head of, of what I want to do, what I want to accomplish. And it's, it's actually eerie to, to flip over my computer and look at my goals that I've set and look at how I've basically been able to check them off one by one this year. And I think it's just so huge. It gives you motivation. It gives you clarity. It gives you you know, a vision of what you want to do and where you want to become. And, uh, I can't, I can't stress enough the importance of setting goals. Wow. That's, uh, quite an endorsement for sure. So, um, do you have goals that are beyond this current year significantly that, that would, you know, position you as a career, you know, from a career perspective where you want to be and what you expect from yourself? Do you kind of think about that and look at those goals as well? I, I do. I don't have those goals written down. All the goals I had written down at this that I did basically, you know, January 1st, setting up a new year this year were all goals for the year, goals that I wanted to be able to have a timeline and be able to attain within a year. And then kind of inside of me, I all the, I have ultimate goals that I feel like will be a result of accomplishing all my little goals that I set. Right. Obviously, I think from day one, when I started playing professional golf, I wanted to be a full-time PGA Tour player. Right. That's always going to be a goal inside of me, um, you know, in my heart every week. That's what I'm playing for. But I think guys have a tendency to get caught up or even impatient when they think that's that's their ultimate goal and they're still on this level and maybe get a little bit restless or discouraged that it isn't happening right away. So yeah. this year... With, send, with setting those little goals that I've been able to accomplish along the way, I've found myself getting closer and closer to my ultimate goal. Right. And it's been, I mean, it's been extremely rewarding because when you do check off one of those little goals, not only do you feel the sense of accomplishment, but then you realize that, hey, like this is how I make progress. This is how I get closer to the goal of, of where I really want to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I think that that ultimate goal probably doesn't need to be written down so much if it's uh, you know so ingrained in you as to what you want, and you don't need to be reminded to think about it by the sounds of it. Exactly. If, yeah. you, if you if it's something that means enough to you that you think about every day, right? I don't think there's any need to write it down. I would agree because um, it's constantly on your mind. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about confidence. Obviously, your your confidence is is in a good place right now. You're you're playing really well. What does how, how did you get to that point in in your opinion? Was it sort of a combination of work you've done physically and, and mentally, or is it? I mean, you've mentioned that goals is a big part of that. Is there anything specific that comes to your mind when it comes to uh, confidence and in, in how you've been playing lately? Um, confidence is is huge. I don't really know if I can explain how to gain confidence because it's as I've 
been able to gain momentum and confidence over this year. It's been it's been based on results. So if you're not having results, I don't know how to really explain how how one would go about gaining confidence or or generating that going into an event to try and turn things around because I've had the opposite effect as well of when I've been playing poorly, you lose confidence and the next thing you know, you, you can't see yourself shooting 68 or 67 or contending and, and you're in a, you know, in a kind of a downward spiral that, that doesn't lead to anything good. Right. Um, I think that for me, I like to play. I'm not a real range practice guy. I like to go out and play and post scores and this winter, I played just about every day, and I kept every single score. I finished out all my holes. I wrote down my scores on my calendar when I got back home. And, you know, eventually you're going to have your bad days, but eventually you're going to notice a streak of, say, three or four days in a row where you've been four or five under. And I think that just by having that visual and knowing that these are the scores you shot, whether they're in a tournament or not, that you're capable of doing that. That's something that you can use to build confidence on, and that's what I – was able to do this winter just by playing rounds, you know, casual rounds with buddies or whatever, by taking them almost as seriously as a tournament and, and being able to post scores that I knew, you know, I didn't leave any shots out there. I was able to start saying to myself when I got into actual tournaments, hey, you know, like I've played five of the last six rounds under par. There's no reason I can't do it this week. I'm capable. Then you go out and post one, you know, a good first round, and then it only adds to your your confidence and you can start to build momentum and you can start to to really get the ball rolling and, and gain some confidence yeah so i mean it really sounds to me like it's kind of the snowball effect you kind of start getting some good rounds then you get some some good finishes and then it kind of gets a little bit better and higher finishes and and then of course you've had a couple of uh couple of wins now and and you had a couple of top fives kind of coming into that as well which um, probably contributed and it just sort of built from there. Would that be fair? Yeah. I had to get myself first. I had to get myself into contention in tournaments before I could, you know, truly believe that I was, that I was able to get into contention and that I was able to have chances to win. And I was able to do that a few times. And then I came out, you know, with poor last rounds or, or not being able to quite seal the deal. But I was able to draw from that that, I'm able to get into this position. I'm able to get into contention, and I can do it again. And then eventually at the Candy Waters in, earlier in the spring, I was able to get myself into contention again, and I had come up short a few times too many leading up to that, and I just kind of knew and convinced myself that this is my time. I've done it enough. Now it's time to take the next step. And when I was able to ultimately win that tournament and, and gain that confidence and know that I – I'm capable of winning, then that just opened a whole new a whole new door, I think, to to my confidence in my career because going forward every tournament I played in I knew I could win. I knew I was capable. That was now my, my goal in every event and it was a very legitimate goal because I was able to prove to myself that I could do it. And now, you know, with a couple of weeks ago in Fort McMurray on the last day, knowing that I had come from two behind to win the tournament earlier in the year, knowing I was in the same situation and capable of doing that, I was able to go out and play free and confident, knowing that I was capable. And ultimately, it, it led to me feeling very comfortable out there, uh, very patient, and it came out with a good result. Yeah, wow. Well, it sounds, uh, it sounds to me like in the Candy Waters win, you kind of talked yourself into it, and you knew that... You'd been close, but you hadn't closed the deal, and then you kind of pushed yourself, if sounds like anyway, mentally, to kind of get the job done, and you told yourself that you were capable of doing it, and, and then, of course, you did. And then in the Fort McMurray event, sounds like you kind of already had the confidence, and then you just sort of let it happen more. So was that kind of how it went? or? Yeah, I, I mean, it's strange. The two wins are are both, they both happen in, in different ways. I felt very... Um, I don't want to say stress, but I felt the weight of the situation in in the spring at the, at the Candy Waters. I kind of felt felt the heat coming down, felt some nerves I hadn't felt in a while. I hadn't won a professional tournament. Yeah. Um, you know, I had some doubts that I was I had to to conquer, and it was more of a kind of a almost like a marathon battle that I felt like when I finally won the tournament and 
got that monkey off my back that I could breathe and that it was, you know, gave me some breathing room and some, basically a monkey off my back. And then in Fort yeah. McMurray, I was very calm on the last day. I was very confident and patient and I was able to draw almost every single shot from what happened earlier in the spring when I won and know that one bad swing wasn't going to hurt me or here and there. And it just seemed to come, I don't want to say easy because it didn't come easy, but the last day it just seemed like everything worked out the way that I had planned and worked out the way that it was supposed to work out. And it was a fairly stress-free final four holes. I didn't feel the same kind of, you know, heavy heartbeat or pressure that I felt earlier in the year. Right. It's nice to know moving forward that I've, uh, I've learned how to deal with those situations. Yeah. And, and, you know, the dealing with the situations of being close to the top and, and pulling it off, you know, on the flip side of that, and, and I suppose this could fall into that situation as well, this question, but, you know, when you have a challenge or a difficult situation that comes up in your round, maybe it's, maybe it's a bad hole or something like that, you know, how do you, prevent yourself from carrying it over to the next hole or how do you focus your mind to deal with that challenge whatever it might be i think that's a good question i think it's probably different for everybody depending on who they are as a person i'm usually really good at being able to get myself motivated to either make up for the shot i just hit or you know get a good shot on the board after a really poor shot or a poor hole and um i have a tendency to get bend out of shape and, and frustrated out there, but I don't think it is to the point that it affects my next shot. I feel like it almost motivates me, gives me fire to, to go and prove to myself on the next shot that the last shot or the last hole is not who I am as, as a golfer. It's not going to define my round or my tournament and that, you know, the next shot is an opportunity to, to make it back and to hit a good shot and to start, start the ball rolling in the right direction again. Hmm. And I think I was able to, to really get a good sense of that feeling uh, in Fort McMurray when I made a nine in the in the second round, and I was beyond tore up for for the final the rest of that round, the last four or five holes of that round, and the whole day, I was as torn up as I've ever been over one hole of golf in my life. And finally, I was able to just tell myself, you know, like you still have a chance despite making that big number. You know, consider yourself lucky. Go out and and prove to yourself and, and the people watching that that number isn't going to affect you the rest of the way of this tournament. You can still win this tournament. And I was able to, to get my head past it at some point that night after that round and, <laughs> and come out there in the third round and play a good solid third round. And then again on the final round, play pretty much for stake free golf and, and really bounce back and, and prove to myself that those kind of blemishes aren't the end of the world. Yeah, well, whatever you did, you certainly uh, turned it around well. I mean, obviously you played, I think you played two rounds bogey-free, and you only had three bogeys in that nine. So, um, yeah, you definitely turned it around and and got yourself back on track. So you had mentioned earlier in in the interview that um, you're not a range guy. And, you know, when it comes to practice, how do you practice when you're preparing for an event and you know, do you, do you structure your practice or do you try to just play and not practice at all during a, the tournament weeks? I think it all depends on, on the shape of my game going into the events. There are times when I, when I need a good range session. If I'm not confident in, in the way I'm hitting the ball or I don't have control of my ball, then, you know, I'm not opposed to sitting on the range for a couple hours and figuring it out. Um, I think where I, what I was trying to get at when I say I'm not a range guy is if I if I feel like I'm hitting the ball good and I'm confident in my swing, I'm going to go to the golf course. I'm not going to sit on the range and, and beat perfect shots, per se, out of the range all day when I could be on the golf course working on the rest of my game, working on my scoring ability or my mental game or my short game or whatnot. Um, I think that if you're confident in something, that's when you that's when you take it to the course or when you take it to a tournament. And um, if you if you have something you need tweak, then that, then I'll go to the range. Um, if I practice before a tournament, a lot of the times I'll practice shots that I need to hit on the golf course. I do most of my practice sessions are are not with 
with alignment aids or anything like that. They're just me visualizing a shot on a golf course that I may need in the next tournament. I may need three months down the road. I know in Florida I was hitting shots that I might need at Uplands in, in Victoria in June. Right. And just different ways to, to keep my mind engaged in what I'm doing and not make it so I'm just beating balls out into the range like a robot. Yeah, well, you know, you're... Uh... It's interesting, you know, the more interviews I get into, the more people I talk to that are playing great and winning golf tournaments, you know, that's exactly what they do. Uh, they don't go to the range and beat balls and hit the same club over and over. They try to hit different shots that they may need that week or for another week, or they don't just go to the range because they, they go there when they have a purpose. And otherwise, they're focusing on, you know, different shots that they may need or working on you know tempo or distance control or or other things like that it sounds exactly like what what you do so um, yeah i think you i think you hit the nail on the head there if you're going to practice you got to have a purpose you can't just be out there hitting balls for eight hours because people say you should be out there hitting balls for eight hours if right. you've got a specific shot that you feel like you're weak weak at and you need to work on it then go out there with the purpose of getting better at that shot or you know, if you find that you're missing a few left to right putts, go to the putting green and hit some left to right putts. But yeah. I think it's very important to have a very concise purpose to your practice so that your mind is fully engaged and that you're actually always getting better with your practice as opposed to just leveling off or, or even getting worse. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, how important is it for you to have fun on the golf course? Does that contribute a lot to your success? Um, I think a lot of people who watch me play golf would say that it doesn't look like I have much fun on the golf course, <laughs> Okay, um, which is kind of an interesting way to look at it because I don't know when I'm playing, if I would actually say that I am having fun per se. I feel like when I'm out there golfing, I'm in, I'm in the heat of battle. I'm, it's fun at the end of the tournament to me, for me to look back on on how I handled things and the results I had and whatnot, but I think I'm so engaged in, in playing the best golf I can and, and shooting the best scores I can that I'm almost too intense on the golf course to be having a whole bunch of fun. And I just think that's the way that my my makeup is. I feel like I'm, I'm a very intense golfer. I go out there, I feel like that's that's when my job, that's when I have to show up to work is, is day yeah. one through four. I go out there and I take every shot seriously and I try and hit it to the best of my ability. And then at the end of the week, if I do my job and I play to my capabilities, I know at the end of the week I'm going to be rewarded with a good finish. And that's when the whole week kind of turns around and, and becomes a fun experience to me when I can look back and, and say, these are the situations I, I handled. These are the ones that challenged me. This is what I need to do better next week. You know, that's what, that's what, motivates me about the game of golf and that's what in the long run is fun to me the whole lifestyle is fun i can i can't imagine myself doing anything different but i'm not the kind of guy who's out on the golf course smiling and laughing one through 18 right well that, you know what that's important to to know your personality and what works for you and that's uh you know a part of everyone's success is is understanding what it takes and and what attitude and what thoughts are meaningful to you. So, um, so that's, that's important for sure. What about patience? You know, I, I, I know you've kind of mentioned that before and mentioned that a couple of times. How important is that for you and your success and, and your development to this point? I think patience is, is probably my, my main focus with regards to my mental game. And it's probably my biggest weakness on the golf course week in and week out is I want everything to happen so fast and I don't have much patience with myself when I hit bad shots I tend to get tend to be pretty hard on myself wondering why how I can hit a shot like that when I've hit the shot that I've intended to hit so many times before and I think that's what Johnny and I have been have been focusing on is as soon as I can become more patient on the golf course I'm not going to get as frustrated over bad shots i'm going to be able to let them go and uh and recuperate from them like i did with the nine in fort mcmurray and then i think as i get more patient then i'm probably going to appear to be having more fun on the golf course as well because i'm not going to get so worked up or or have the notion that bad shots are are as devastating anymore i just 
we'll be able to let them go and move on and move on to the next shot. So that's definitely something that I've that I've been working on. It's helped me to kind of appreciate where I'm at in my golf career a little bit more as well. Like I said earlier, I've always wanted to be on the PGA Tour and dream of being on the PGA Tour. And when you're when you're on the mini tours, grinding it out and, and not making a whole lot of money, you have a tendency to to get impatient, and wonder why you're not here yet, get discouraged. And I think that by having some foresight, setting the goals, like I said earlier, it's allowed me to be more patient, appreciate where I'm at in my career a little bit more, and appreciate that these are the kind of tournaments and these are the kind of things that I need to go through to become a better golfer, a golfer that ultimately is capable of playing on the PGA Tour. Yeah, wow. It's, you know, you've got a, a great understanding of, of what it takes, I think, and, and that's um, certainly going to help you to improve your patience when you know what it takes and, and how to get there and, and understand that it does take some time. So, you know, the last thing I, I have here, I just wanted to, to ask you about staying in the present. And it seems to have kind of came up a couple of times in, in our discussion, you know, talking about the challenges and, you know, you just focused on getting your next shot where you wanted it. And, you know, how important is is your, is your staying in the present to your success and is there anything that you do to kind of get yourself back into the present if you get out of it thinking ahead or thinking back or what's your kind of perspective on that? Uh, it's funny. We were just talking about that at dinner. Um, I think that for me, it's almost too much of a burden to try and be completely in the moment, you know, unaware of, of what I, where I stand on the leaderboard or what I ultimately want in a tournament all the time. I don't, I, I know some people don't like to look at leaderboards or some people don't want to think about what they can make on a hole or whether this hole is a birdie hole or whatnot. I think that the, worrying about those kind of things is, is against my makeup. I, I, my mind wanders a lot. I have to let it wander to potentially thinking about winning, seeing myself with the trophy or knowing where I stand on the leaderboard and, and knowing that I might need to make a birdie here to stay ahead of the guy who's one or two behind me or to catch a guy who's one or two ahead of me. I feel like it's healthy for me to let my mind wander to those places because then I'm not wondering about them or, or trying to avoid them. Right. But then I also, that being said, I also pride myself on my ability that, you know, 30 or 40 seconds before I hit my golf shot, I have a, a very singular purpose. I, I see my shot. I know that the next shot ahead of me is, is the most important shot. And if I want to, to reach these goals that I'm seeing in my head or make these birdies that I'm seeing in my head, I need to pull the shot off that, that is right in front of me. And I think that how, how people handle the thoughts in their head, getting ahead of themselves and whatnot is totally up to them and, and who they are. But I think once you get to that 40 seconds before you hit a golf shot, you need to be, you need to have the perspective of this is the golf shot that, that ultimately matters. Nothing else matters, but this shot and, and you have to engage yourself fully in that shot because otherwise you're not going to pull it off. Yeah, no, I mean, that's 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 great. I mean, you know, yeah, when those distractions, some people call them distractions, but, you know, it's, as you said, it's kind of important for you to know where you stand and, and uh, if that information comes to you or you happen to see the leaderboard, well, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but when it comes time to playing the next shot, you need to be focused on that that individual shot so you can uh, have all your attention on it and have the most uh the best chance i guess to hitting the shot well exactly yeah i think i mean some people who are made up a little bit a little bit differently than me might might function better being oblivious to to what's going on around them and uh, where they stand for me i i've found that i've had my best success when i am able to embrace all aspects of, of what's going on and then you know, turn my turn my mind around to to what's at hand. Yeah, I, I even use that theory with with trouble on the golf course. Some people say you shouldn't shouldn't talk about or even look at trouble on your golf shot. I found that I'm more comfortable over the golf ball if I you know look left, look right. I'm aware of every danger that that are, that awaits the golf shot, and then I see the shot that I need to hit, and I just tune the other stuff out and, and hit the golf shot. But Perfect. That's that's where you just need to know yourself and and how your how your mind works. 
That was Riley Wielden from the PGA Tour Canada chasing one of five Web.com Tour cards being handed out to the top five players at the end of this year's season. I'm Brett Taylor from Tour Tactics. Thanks for listening.